thank you for the introduction. Uh, welcome everyone to the Spatial Lighting Talks. It's a pleasure to be here today. I will focus on the application of science and bridging critical gaps, specifically in the context of extreme weather events. While we have a wealth of resources and data at our disposal, the challenge is often getting this information to those who can make the greatest impact. Um, let's consider floods as an example. The frequency of flood events around the globe has risen sharply over time, with one fourth of the world's population directly or indirectly exposed to floods. Sadly, 89% of the exposed population resides in low and middle income countries. But what happens when floods strike? How do we obtain critical information related to flood inundation, which can be used for response and mitigation efforts? Aerial surveys are often infeasible over large areas. The way around this problem is using satellite images. Uh, there have been significant advancements in this area, such as the launch of Sentinel-1 satellites and the use of cloud platforms like Google Earth Engine. But despite these resources, the disaster response community is often unable to leverage them due to technical complexities. And this is where our Global Flood Mapper comes into play. Global Flood Mapper is a browser-based tool that enables users to map and download flood extent anywhere in the world without requiring any programming skills. As an example, the graphic here shows the flood map of the state of Bihar in India that covers an area of approximately 36,000 square miles. And this flood map was generated in less than a minute, thanks to the computational power of Google Earth Engine. Flood mapping on Global Flood Mapper happens uh, on the fly in near real time and is completely free. Since the release of Global Flood Mapper, the practice and research communities have widely adopted it, providing us with valuable feedback. Our tool is also listed on the World Bank Water Data website. It has been utilized by news agencies in India and has played a vital role in several academic projects. Moving forward, we intend to expand this to other extreme weather events using variables like temperature, precipitation, land cover, and our own state-of-the-art gridded population and development indicator data sets. This will enable integrated analysis of climate extremes and their impact on people, environment, and the economy. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer questions that people may have.